Hi guys, it's nice to meet you at the Open Source Summit 2021 again. My name is Jongwon Kang, working at the Affiliated Institute of Atri in South Korea. As you know, we are in the COVID-19 pandemic situation, so I hope to see you in person next time. Today, I'm gonna talk about a practical approach to control an authorized execution of interpreters. As follows, the presentation slide consists of seven parts. Introduction. In the Linux system, there are many features to prevent or limit unauthorized execution, such as file mode bits, access control list, IMA EVM, FS Verity, no exit mount option, and mandatory access control frameworks. It's too many, right? I think you have heard about them if you are interested in hardening security for new systems. However, do you think are they enough to control the unauthorized execution? In my opinion, they are not because of the interpreters and squid files such as Python, Perl, and Ruby, and so on. Of course, they are very powerful in making a program than compile the languages. So we use them, but it's a program that most cyber adversaries also like to use it for hiding their activities and artifacts. Also, there are far less more rares using interpreters in Linux system. You can find out the more rares easily on the internet. To solve the issue, there are some previous works by Clip OS, Ome Exec Flag of Open System Core, and Astra Interpreter Slab, and Ome Exec Corner Patch of Corner Self protection process. There was also a consideration regarding interpreters and script files of Chromium OS development team. Anyway, we will look into the works in more detail in the related work slide. So what's the problem? As a result, they are in some efficient to restrict interpreters. In short, they have some kind of faults and flaws. That's why I propose the approach. Related work. Let's take a look into Clip OS first. Clip OS is a kind of Linux distribution focused on security and developed by ANC, a French government organization. Clip OS has a feature to control script files based on write exclusive or execute. As you see, it added a new flag of open system core. So it decides whether allow the execution in the corner according to the path and no exact bound option. But the approach of Clip OS requires patch an interpreter and a Linux kernel. As a result, it makes maintenance issues to keep up with a new version. Next, Astra Linux. It was developed for a similar purpose for security like Clip OS. In the Astra Linux, the Astra interpreters lock is one of the locks that are security features. It means that Astra Linux considered many kinds of stuff for security. If you are curious about it, you can download the install image file on the website. Anyway, as you see, it controls many interpreters such as Python, Perl, Dash, Ruby, and so on. 
In detail, um, the astral interpreter's law specifies the interpreters into the extended attribute via finding out its file. The pictures are showing what I described. And Astral Linux modified the Linux kernel like Clip OS. On a side note, it was working well when I tested. Was and I didn't know the reason. Next, Chromium OS. According to the Chromium OS document, we can understand the reason why the Chromium OS limits the, the interpreters, even dash and bash. So in Chromium OS, most of the applications were implemented by compiled languages, not script files. The dash and bash are, are allowed restrictively only for development. Last, OME exec kernel patch of kernel self protection project. As far as I know, it was proposed by Michael Salam from the Clip OS. He suggested OMA exec as a new flag for the Open Add 2 system call. As we already know, it works in the past mounted with the no exec option. Also, it has the maintenance issue depending on updated interpreters. Actually, I don't know when it, be, when it will be merged into the main line. Design. This is some brief overview of my approach. Actually, I prefer to the related work. From now, I will name the program implemented by my approach to interpreter law for convenience. My interpreter law works based on the right exclusive or execute policy like the clip OS. <clears throat> it also handles the execution of an interpreter differently according to the range of e UID. If, if a process has a UID more than or equal to 1000, then the interpreter lock will control the process. It means that the interpreter lock only controls normal users, not root or administrator. Although, I will explain in detail after the target interpreters are Python and Perl. Because most, of, most Linux distributions install them by default. Also, as you see, the interpreter log is a kernel module and it, it hooks the functions like exe Six exe cv at and bprm change into p within the corner by the f trace feature. So it allows the execution of script files in, in the not writable path only for normal users. But as you know, the administrator like root can execute interpreters and script files in any path. Of course, the normal users and processes can't execute interpreters and script files in a writable path. In summary, my interpreter law controls the unauthorized execution of interpreters and script files by the path and EUID. Okay, um, let's have a look in more detail. Uh, you can divide the path, whether writable and executable. As I already described, they are the exclusive or relation. I think you may be wondering that 
how I divided the path. First, I looked into the permission of path by users, if they can write or execute. Also to do it, I referred to policy manuals of Linux distributions. Um, as you know, it describes the policy requirement for the distributions. It includes also the structure, contents, and specifications for everything of them, such as UID classes, the list and purpose of path, and so on. As I mentioned, the interpreter lab only controls normal users who have UID more than or equal to 1,000. So the normal users can't execute interpreters and they are limited from executing the script files depending on the path. I already said that the interpreter lab targets Python and Perl, but there might be so many interpreters to control, right? Even I didn't know. Anyway, I classify the interpreters by if I installed or not installed by default. So I chose Python and Perl. How about bash and dash? They are only for a command line tool, not much programmable, programmable than other interpreters. As you know, we can't live without them in the Linux system. So the interpreter lab doesn't care about bash and dash. To control the interpreters and script files, I thought it was proper to control them when it executes. So I took a look into hooking techniques by user mode and corner mode. At first, I wanted to solve the issue in the user mode by LD preload and Ptrace techniques, but they had its limitations. I'm sure that there isn't a best way than not to use interpreters. As you know, it's impossible practically. Modifying interpreters are too. Eventually, I solved the issue with the actress hook in corner mode. It is very useful for hooking the execution path of any functions within the corner. But it's not a panacea, right? To hook, it, to hook functions in corner mode, I have to consider stability and other things. Also, the Linux kernel is really progressive. So I have to upgrade my interpreter lab according to our new version of the Linux kernel. Implementation. On these slides, I will describe some kind of stuff for implementation briefly. I implemented and tested the interpreter lab in Debian and Ubuntu. You can test the interpreter lab on the distributions. Also, I implemented my interpreter lab based on the F-trace rule. I was able to save my time of trial and error thanks to it. Anyway, the interpreter lab hooks the three functions, sys.exe.cve, sys.exe.cve.add, and bprm change in the p. I will talk about more the three functions in the next slide. There are two ways to run the script language. First, we can run it as arguments of an interpreter binary. The second is running the executable script file directly. As you see, they are handled at the point 
of EXECVE system core within the corner. So the interpreter lock hooks the point to control that. Next, I will describe the second case, which is executing script file itself. As we know, the script files include the shebang at the first line. It indicates which interpreter executes the script file. As you see, the BPRM change into P function chooses the pro proper interpreter for the script file. So the interpreter lock hooks the function and controls the execution of script files. Next, I'm going to talk about EXECV add system call. As you see, it is similar to EXECV system call, but the differences are a way to execute files. It executes files depending on the combination of directory file descriptor and path name. Of course, the directory file descriptor is obtained by the open system core. If it is known, then it will execute files by the path name only. Also, F exe CVE function calls the exe CVE add system core within. I think you can understand how to use the exe CVE add by the exam examples. In this slide, I'd like to show you how to hook EXE CVE and EXE CVE as system calls. The upper part is the interpreter lock and the lower part is the Linux corner. I made three functions and most of the work is done in the common function like the Linux kernel. Also, the work is checking the file path execution, execution argument environmental variables, whether they are valid. To inspect environmental variables is done at the hook common and hook BPRM change into P. The inspection is no problem at the hook common function because the address of the environmental variables is in the argument. But at the hook BPRM change into P, it isn't easy to get the environmental variables. So I refer to an auxiliary factor. There is some extra space and it is okay at the moment because the Linux kernel will initialize the auxiliary vector later. Also, I implemented the real path function to identify the precise path of interpreters and script files. If we want to hook, if we want to look into in detail, I recommend you visit my GitHub. The URL is on the last, last slide. And for EUID separation, like the source code on the slide, I did it to control only for more than equal 1000 EUID. Discussion. In this slide, I will describe some issues that I considered during the implementation. During the implementation, I suffered from many bypasses. Finding and fetching was really time consuming work. To handle it, I had help from skilled hackers who are working at theory in South Korea. The first the first case is to copy a binary file of interpreters. It's impossible to limit the execution 
by the copied interpreters. Of course, if I track the binaries from original to duplication, then I can solve it. But tracking files is another work beyond the scope of my topic. Anyway, we need help from other security features like IMA, EVM, or no exact mount options. To use IMA EVM, we have to sign every binary files and manage them. It isn't a simple job, so I recommend using the no exit option. It isn't complex as IMA EVM, but we should separate the home directory from the root partition. Another case is a hard and simple linked file. I could handle it by the real path function simply. As you know, interpreters have many options to execute a script. Also, there are environmental variables to consider. I developed the interpreter lab, which handles all of them. In this slide, I will talk about unusual cases that bypass the interpreter lab. The first is the dynamic linker. I haven't seen to execute binaries by the dynamic linker directly. So the interpreter line limits the case without difficulty. But another case by user for the FD system call wasn't easy to solve. The original purpose of user for the FD is to enhance performance by handling the page fault exception in user mode not in corner mode. But these days, many hackers use it to succeed in exploiting the Linux kernel. Also, the usual fault FD technique was able to bypass the checking rules in the interpreter lock. To serve it, we have to use another kernel that is above the 5.2 version. The kernel serves the syscontrol option to control the user for the FD. The last one is related to a technique for fileless malware. As you see, you can find the memfd file for pulse audio in the proc file system. And then you can check it by copying any binaries to the memfd, especially also the IMA EVM can't block the MEMFT technique. In my opinion, the MEMFT should be controlled for security. Anyway, I observed if there is a case that executes binaries by the MEMFT, but I haven't found any case, so I added the MEMFT file name to the checking rule in the interpreter lab. There are also exceptional cases such as Python debugger, Python document, hyphen for bash, and a symbol and link tree. In the last case, the interpreter lab mishandles the symbol and link as an execution option. Anyway, I fixed our issues that we checked until now. Frankly, it was a kind of paranoid war. Conclusion. Although the interpreters and script files are convenient for developing programs, but they must be restricted if we focus we, if we focus on security, unauthorized users can do any what they want by using interpreters, but to controlling that is difficult. The best way is to remove them entirely if we can live with binaries only. So I proposed a better approach to handle 
the issue than other related works. As I mentioned, the approach needs the prerequisites, but I think it's a reasonable job for security. Finally, my presentation is over. If you have any questions, you can contact me by Slack 